this week, how to deal with Luke. Calm down, calm down, calm down. Don't smash anything. Have you ever thought about having anger management lessons or anything like that? Already had them. Have you? Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> Shit. And for Liam and Skye, two year 11s in love, the secret's out. Did you know that we knew? Scott. Have you talked to through Sky? Yeah. Yeah, I'm scared still. Did you not know? No! No! No one tells me anything. Number two, can condoms be obtained at any age? No! Today, it's sex ed for the year 11s. Condoms, there isn't a legal age limit. You can still go to the family planning clinic, whether you're male or female, and get condoms for free. Our sex and relationships education would be seen as very good. And actually, it's much easier with a room full of teenagers who all have the same thing. It's much less embarrassing to have it that way than my dad sitting me down and saying, now, son. I'm going to give you a picture. I want you to label the diagram as much as you can. That's jokes. Anus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to spell anus. No, A-N-U-S. This is the way I know. <laughs> The period, huh? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> right down, right down. <laughs> the lesson is being taken by Mrs Adams, a health worker who teaches Essex kids about sex, relationships and their consequences. It doesn't seem to be a connection in people's brains that actually if you have sex and you're not using contraception, then you will get pregnant. So, guys, how many teenagers get pregnant in England each year? Any ideas? 15,000? OK, it's actually roughly around 39,000. There's a thin line between being pressured to do it and just really wanting to do it because everyone else is. That's part of sort of growing up, you trying to be a big man and be like, yeah, I've had it. Yeah, it feels good. Before you've had sex, everyone thinks, oh, yeah, it's, gonna, it's so good, like, but it ain't as good as everyone says it is. My dad was just like, I'm proud of you, son. I was like, oh, cheers, Dad. Before you start to have sex, you need to sort out a reliable method of contraception first. Don't take a chance and think, I might get away with it, because you might not. Do you think students are having sex at a younger age? Yeah, I mean, okay. I know that there will be parents who think that they wouldn't dream of, you know, that being an aspect of their life already, and it is. Method of contraception at all. First love, okay. it's 15 and 16, it's... Absolute pandemonium. Not in class. There's a time and a place. The mail's gone. All we can do as a school is equip them with the knowledge, make sure they understand the choices they're making, and hope they make the right ones. Liam and Sky got together after she arrived from Thailand. Well, I've known him since I first come to England, and been together for. Um, a year and five months. Because, <laughs> like, Luke's going out with cash and I'm going out with Liam. There's nobody to get left out. And we just have a laugh. She's my friend. He's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you describe each other? What's, what's Sky like? She's amazing to be with. Uh, throw, she, there's just too many things. Uh, she's, she's lovely, she's quiet, she's funny. <laughs> I wasn't in love before, but when I found him, I, I think I am. Liam's been called out of class by Mrs Goddard. She's the school's inclusion manager. She oversees all students with special educational needs, as well as helping those facing difficult times. And she's picked up on rumours about Liam and his girlfriend, Skye. Right, I'm aware that things have changed a little bit for you. Did you know that we knew it was in school? Have you talked it through Sky? Yeah. Have you, have you spoken to your granddad yet? Because we, as a school, we're not allowed to keep things from carers. Your granddad's your carer. I'm not allowed to keep this from him. You need to have the conversation with him just to put him in the picture about what's going on. Okay. Big change, eh, mate? 
I feel really bad, like. Why are you saying you're feeling bad? I wish I never done that. No. Tough, eh? Yeah. When I told Liam I was pregnant, he was quite shocked. Come on, we'll go out. I want him to stay with me here, but I do scare that if I keep here, then he won't be with me, and he's just... Like, I'm scared that he's going to tell me to get rid of it. She needs somewhere to go. We need to know if there's measles in the school. We need to know if there's chicken pox in the school, because if she's pregnant, she can't be here. There's a whole load of other stuff. It's the same as she's got to treat the same as a worker. You know, she's a pregnant woman now, rather than a child. Um, can you sign me in, please? The also other thing is, you know, it won't be kept quiet. Oh, she won't keep it quiet by the sounds of it. It'll, no, it'll be around the school, probably by lunchtime. Are you going to come in? Yeah. Come in, Dad. Oh, look, <laughs> I don't know. Is it true or is it real? I wonder if anyone knows. We'll, we'll do a bit of investigating. Thank you, thank you. How do you know? Did you not know? No! Shut up, though. How do you know? I found out from someone like in the year below. Like, yeah, so do I. Oh, actually pregnant. She's going to get all big and gross. <laughs> ben and I went to the shop the other day. I don't know, at lunchtime, and we're walking back, and Liam was like five paces in front of Sky. They'd had a row about something. Something. Sky, not a care in the world. I know, she was smiling, like just <laughs> smiling, eating her pasta. And I'm, You've got a baby in your tummy. Oh. Hmm? She, she's pregnant, Sky. Did you not know that? No! Oh, for fuck's sake. I know, Becky, I, no one tells me anything. Um, what are they planning to do? Oh, keep it. Um, her mum, very pleased. Won't allow abortion anyway because she disagrees with it. Fucking hell. The kids. Disaster. Well, I've managed to go 35 years without having a child. Why does everyone want to rush to have one, for Christ's sake? I'm really excited. But you can't wait till we get fat. Not really. <laughs> you get a <laughs> backache. She really said it, she I can't why wait. Why would, why would I just want to get the backache? bump. Let's hey, don't worry, you're going to get backache from big boobs as well. Solomon. Saggy. <laughs> Saggy boobs. <laughs> Like that. Oh. Will you I breastfeed? Like that, yeah. yeah. Oh. But yeah, Liam. I think he'd be. I reckon he'll be a good. I think he'd be like more grown up than he is now when the baby's here. I think. I don't know. I don't think I've got the power like you have to have a kid. <laughs> You're more stronger than us. Not really. Yeah. I do scared. Plus you've got Liam. He yeah. helped you out. Yeah, but I'm scared still. I feel that it's incredibly sad that a 15-year-old has got to deal with what Sky's going to have to deal with, 15, 16-year-old, you know, that's, it's, that, it's tough. Being a parent's tough, you know, it's, and that's, she's a child. I never thought I will f be finished school as a mum. Never thought that. Would you like me to change the rules of the world because they don't suit you? Would you like me to do that? 98% of our kids come in every day, do the right thing and leave. 2% take up probably 70% of our resources. If they are stopping themselves from learning, then we try and work with them. If it's stopping others from learning, then they, they need to be removed. That problem needs to stop because the others don't deserve that. But I'll get a detention on that. Are you aware, Mr. C is out here? Uh, Mr. Cook is not going anywhere until he goes to see Ms. Connolly to get his report. He is refusing to go and talk to Ms. Connolly and get his report. Okay, take a second. Is someone taking the first one off of you? Or... Hello, I'm very sorry. We're not talking to Luke Cook, who is the boy currently stood at your window. Yeah. So can we please ignore him? Right, if he wishes to talk to anyone, he can come and talk to me or to Joe Connolly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> Fifteen-year-old Luke is on report for his disruptive behaviour. Does it worry you that you get in trouble? Yeah, definitely. It's just long. That's all I can say. It's the only way for it. It's just long getting in trouble. There's no point in it. Sorry, miss. Whilst I don't wish to be difficult, I don't want everyone having conversations with Luke because I feel it's encouraging him to avoid his responsibilities and all he literally has to do is go to Miss Connolly and ask for his report. 
But I like Luke and I've, had, I've always had a good relationship with him. I know that there's a really successful young person in there, but yeah, he's tested my patience. When I'm getting in trouble, all that's going from me is just I'm like, why, why did I do this, why did I do that? If I didn't do that, I wouldn't be in this situation. Are you going to get this report? It was rude to me. Yeah, she said sorry. Can I just point out, yeah? Even you can see how silly you're being. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying not to have an argument with you, so I'm going to smile and laugh, not at you, but at the whole situation, Luke, in order to break the tension and, and keep some calmness going, OK? Mm -hmm. No, I'll sit outside. OK, if that's your choice. But you're not going anywhere till you get your report. Oh. Thank you. Being on report is serious. Only 3% of students ever need to go on it. Well, that's very silly of you. It's the school's way of trying to improve bad behaviour. But Luke, oh, well, was that lesson that bad? Yes. Notes about Luke's behaviour are made by teachers after every lesson. Each day he must check in with his head of house, Miss Conway. Until his behaviour is acceptable, Luke receives a new report every week. OK. There's a lovely report. Don't trip it, don't screw it, look after it. It's like your new puppy. It's a Persian blue staff for you, yeah? <laughs> and they're nice dogs. So, how long have you been on the report for? Quite long, really. All of this <laughs> term, or like...? Yeah, near enough. It's report number 57. Yeah, it feels like it. <laughs> Hiya! I, I was just about to send an email saying I've lost Luke. Luke lost his report. Oh dear, he found it there. Here, Luke, he's work. He's a bit tired after I've come all the way up to the top of the evening. He's got to survive, right, you, Luke? Cool. Here, yeah, Luke, come sit here. You just missed the fun part. We just done Mrs. Goddard takes Luke for two of his subjects. Can you sit yourself down? She has been his most consistent support throughout his time at school. Luke, can you get your pens and pencils out for me? Can you get your pen? Right. <laughs> Girls. <laughs> Give me a headache. Right, can I just tell you what we've just done? Mm. You haven't got a pen? Luke? Have you got a pen? And can I have your report, please? Right, let's go, people, keep going. OK, we now need to move on to um, communication difficulties, because for some people, for very, very different reasons, communication is really difficult. So we're just going to read through this. The book, bit in the book is actually very good. It's just sometimes I'm just having like, I've put a funny day. You know what I mean? And I'll just say something and the teacher won't like it. And then I'll end up giving them back chat and then it always comes to worst. <laughs> OK, I'm going to ask you, so tune in, OK? What's the normal speed limit on the motorway? Don't even ask me, mate. Well, I'm asking everybody, so you're part of the class. Yeah, but Give I don't want to ask a that somebody might have to do with widening the M25. I will pass this question on to Dean. You've actually been a little bit rude, Luke. These are stupid questions. Well, Luke, I asked you one and you didn't answer, which was a no, real shame. they're stupid. Okay. <laughs> We're just moving on to the, the task. Why is a road a dangerous okay. site? OK, so... <laughs> yeah. Luke is probably just about our most difficult year 11 because he just refuses to accept that he's wrong. You know, there's, there's issues around relationships outside of the school. The granddad's just died. Granddad was a very important person in his life. But he is incredibly challenging. I have no idea why you're behaving like this today. And I really, really don't like it. And I will not let you dictate to me everything that you do. It's not on you. Never so done I'm it. trying to explain to you I what don't I don't want to do. I know you don't want to do it, Luke. If I don't want to do I'm it, I'm do not it. going to do it. Attitude is appalling. Are you all right? Clap at it, then. Pardon? Clap at it, then. Just step outside, Luke, please. I don't want you in here. I want to fucking be in it. I don't even know where I am. Paige knows what she's doing. Kishana, do you know what you're doing? Oh. I can't have you calling me names, Luke. What did I call you now? I can't have you calling me names. Luke. What did I call you? Excuse me, don't shut up. What did I call you a name? As you left the room, you called me a name under your breath. Oh, did I? Yeah? Why don't you hear me then? Ian, why aren't you logged on? I'm not having it. Okay, I'm pissed off to the okay, max. Okay. I'm getting fucking okay, mad. Okay, okay. Calm down, calm down, calm down. Don't smash anything. Come, come out into the quad. 
okay, you know as well as I know, Mrs. Goddard is very, very fair. No, yeah, she okay. ain't. No, apparently, okay. I called her a name in there. Okay, I can't comment. I'm just on call. I've got a call to come up there and speak to you. Obviously, you're on report to me. You're not in the best frame of mind at the moment. Am I right in saying I could be wrong? It's stuff outside school as well. What? No, what do you mean? To do with family and stuff. No, 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 no. What, are you talking about my granddad? Yeah. No. Was he buried or cremated? Cremated. I don't know, there's a lot of different things with his death that mixed me up, like the way he died. How did he die, if that mummy ask him? Slowly. I sort of felt angry, like, at myself, and then I felt sad. Why did you feel angry at yourself? I don't know, but I didn't... I make the effort, really. I couldn't go and see him. The only time I went to see him, I couldn't even walk into the room. <laughs> I just, I, I sort of walked in, saw him, saw my nan, saw her crying, and that's it. <laughs> Couldn't do it. I don't know what it is with me. He's just angry. I don't know what's made him angry. I think he lacks confidence in his own ability, and that has had a direct impact on how he behaves and how he deals with situations. OK, what do we need to do now? I'm seeing Miss Goddard. Yeah? Stay calm, you've got a good relationship with her. Yeah? Should we do that now, then? Yeah, come on. I just don't really know what went wrong today, Luke. A bad I, thing. I know, but I don't think I did anything to deserve what I got. You didn't. Luke, just come here. I've taught you so many times, Luke. Yeah? And we've always got along well. In charge of him, he's going to get two Cs. Yeah. He's doing really well. Academically, he's very comfortably in the middle of this group. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah? And, yeah, it all went wrong today, and I really don't know why. I couldn't... I couldn't... I don't think I could have been more reasonable, Luke. Can you see where Mrs. is coming from? Mm. And I don't think I deserve the names. What did I call you? OK. Tell me what I called you. Under your breath as you left. And a comment about me when I was... What did I say there, then? I don't know. It's on the referral form. I'll have to check. Fuck. Can I go? Please? Luke? I don't yeah? want to... Miss, I don't want to talk to you. I'm... I don't want to... Miss, can I go, please? Will you come back and talk to me about it, Luke, when you come? Please. Oh, come and see me. Or see Miss. Period five. Off you go. Luke, I'm not trying to make your life harder. I'm trying to make it more simple. He's, he's in bits. He's in bits. What are we going to do with him? I don't know. I'm, I'm actually quite concerned. But he clearly needs to talk to someone. Yeah. Luke is in isolation outside the head's office. He's being punished for his behaviour in Mrs Goddard's lesson the day before. Boy, how long, how long, me chat this, just thinking Inside the head's office is Kieran. He's in his first year at the school and he has an unusual request for Mr Goddard. You cold? No, I'm just nervous. You nervous? Yeah. I made you nervous, have I? <laughs> Don't normally make people nervous, Kieran. Don't be nervous. OK, so you're, you're writing a oh, novel. I know my name. Of course I know your name. Isn't that nice? Um, OK, so you're two, you're two chapters in, yeah? And what can I do to help? Um, well, I have only been able to progress this far... Right. ..through the aid of Homework Club. Right, OK. Which has taken a considerable amount of time. I can imagine it is, yeah. I would like to request one period every one or two weeks... Right. ..to progress on my novel. You've thought hard about this, haven't you? I've already spoken to him about it. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear that you've really thought hard about it, which is fantastic. Well done. Um, who's your English teacher? Miss King. Miss King. Have you spoken to Miss King about your novel? Yes. And what did she say? She said that she would help me publish it. Oh, fantastic. It. OK. And okay, right now, you're year seven, you need to focus on being in school, OK? And your novel, 
can take a little bit longer, but right now we need to make sure you're settled and you're doing well, OK? Because we're expecting A's and A stars from 7P1 in their GCSEs. That's what we're expecting. No pressure. No pressure, OK? I would be really pleased to see any of it when you've done it, OK? So when you've got anything printed off, make sure I get a copy, OK? Yep. Well, I shall look forward to reading it then. Ciao. Good stuff. Kieran, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Lovely to see you, Kieran, all right? Bye. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> Yeah, I'm right. Right, clearly, Luke, we had a problem yesterday. I think I always showed you a bit of a respect in this. No, you do. I'm, I'm not saying you didn't, Miss. I was just having a bad day okay. yesterday and it, you just picked the wrong time. We need to, to find a new strategy, OK, for when you are having a bad day so that you're not disrespectful to me or to anybody else. Yeah. Yeah? You are doing so well in that subject. Yeah? But I need you coming in with the right attitude and the right frame of mind. Yeah. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. OK. Right, I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson, yeah? Yeah. You're upstairs. The school are also helping Liam come to terms with his challenges. Yeah, I know. Oh. It does change your life and it does change everything and you think you're ready for it and you're not. You've just got to try and make them as, as aware of what the challenges are going to be as possible, you know, so they're as prepared as they can possibly be. Have a seat, mate. Do you want a coffee or hot chocolate? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah hot chocolate. Easy. Get you warm. And give me a second. Thanks, sir. You're welcome. Say to him when he comes back in, that's a nice coffee machine, because I bought it for him. I've got a flash new drinks machine, Liam. It's, it's, it's my new toy. I did someone special buy it for you, sir. Uh, <laughs> Not really, no. <laughs> Mrs Goddard has worked closely with Liam for over five years. She's also married to the head teacher, Mr Goddard. How's stuff with, how's stuff with Sky? All right? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah? How's she feeling? She's sick yet or...? Yeah. Uh, no, she ain't been sick yet. Female and hormones. You know, there are times when sometimes you think, gosh, she's gone mad. All right, so feel free to come and talk to me. I've been on that side of it. Yeah, and just say, sir, what's going on? Mrs. Goddard used to eat rubber. Promise you. True. She used to walk past a car. <laughs> no, I did not do that. You did. <gasps> I did not. I walked past a car and look at the time and go, I really want to bite it. Yeah, and I did say it actually, but I didn't actually <sighs> do it. Okay. I wouldn't I wouldn't ever say the choices you you know, what's happened is the best choice, mate, I have to say, but you are where you are, aren't you? So you got you gotta deal with it now, really. You know I am. All right, if you wanna come and sort of just ask. All right, somebody who's not your granddad, and then just come and ask, because uh, it is, it's going to be a difficult time. Thanks, sir. All right, mate. Liam's had a difficult relationship with mum not being around on the scene, been brought up by granddad mainly. You know, he's, he just wants the best for Liam so much. For more than 10 years, Liam and his brother and sister have lived with their granddad, George. Well, do you reckon Liam's going to be a good dad? You? <laughs> Yeah, but oh, who's going to look after? Like who's going to look after the baby when you're at school? Her mum, probably. Mum. Liam said he wants it to be tanned with blue eyes. <laughs> 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 that looks weird. Uh, he's all she's... tanned and he's blue eyes. He looks like an yeah, he's alien. Half. Yeah. What was it like when Liam first told you? He never told me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sky's mum did. I couldn't. I just couldn't tell my granddad like. Uh, I didn't know what he was saying. I found it better if, like, Ray would talk to him, like, because it's Sky's mum. What did you say? Not a lot. Just, <laughs> like she said, it's happened. Got to accept it. So, no problem. No. And how would you have been if you were his age and you were in the same situation? I wouldn't be sitting here like this. I'd be in the hospital. <laughs> Not with my dad. <clears throat> Different times, wasn't it, you know? Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, he was all right. I thought he went mad, but he, went, he was all right with it. I was like, yeah, cool. Like, <laughs> he kind of, is he, if you're talking to him about plans and stuff for the future, like about where you're going to live, where it's nice to live, that kind of stuff, have got any thoughts on that? Um, no. Right, you're going to go and get this detention sorted out? Yep. Nearly 
really hot last night. How's everything going so far? Good. What I'm going to be doing is look at the baby in lots of detail, just making sure everything's looking normal, okay? Just need to lift your top up and just lower your trousers slightly. Just going to tuck that in there. So can you feel any movements at this stage? Yeah. Okay, so in the middle of the screen, can you see a nice strong heartbeat? Yeah. So I've got a nice little head here, just where your belly button is. I've got a nice full stomach, which is this little black area just in there. There's a little hand coming to the screen there. Right, I'm happy as it can be. Everything structurally looks fine. Uh, we wanting to find out what you're having today. Yeah, obviously. Can probably give you about a 95 percent chance of what I think. I think you're having a little boy. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Oh, well done. Okay. It was good. The pressures of being 16, starting college, and having a newborn baby to look after as well. That would, that would split the, the strongest and most stable of relationships up, let alone one that's in its infancy still. I am feeling great. <laughs> I just feel good to find out it's a boy. But I don't mind if it's a girl, but like, it's good. When it's on this earth, like, mate, I just can't wait. She can't wait. I actually can't wait. <laughs> It's 4.30. Luke is one of the only students left in the school. He's in detention with Mr Drew. Hello, English. Ah, uh, hello. He should be working, but instead he's trying on Mr Drew's Christmas tie. Well, how much longer is the film? Is that what else you can do? <laughs> Actually, he... He just, yeah, I mean, the thing is, is that I'm afraid, as I've said to him very, very clearly, he treats the whole thing with contempt. As I pointed out to him, I actually take rather great offence at his attitude. Good. It's just hopeless. It's just absolutely hopeless. It's, you know, I don't know. But obviously that means he's not work involved. OK. No. No, we'll keep trying, we'll keep trying. All right, thank you then. Thank you. Has it been nice to you, Mr. Drew, today? He has been relatively pleasant. Relatively pleasant. I'm going to catch up with you tomorrow morning, aren't I? Tomorrow morning, I'll come and see you. Did you have a meeting? Which one? Do you want to shut the door? Hello? Hello. Also still in school is Kieran, who's been at film club. Kieran, you all right? Oh. Did you enjoy the film? Robert and Matthew skipped a bit. So is the film supposed to be still on? It's still on. This is unfortunately exactly what happened last week, miss. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. And so who's left in the room at the moment? Robert and Matthew. Thank you, Ren. He sits and watches the film nicely and other people interfere. As Mr Drew makes a call to find out what's going on, the other members of film club walk past. Uh, boys. I'm going to say sorry. Just come in. You've been at film club? Yes. What did you do to the DVD? Oh, we left it in the machine. No, what did you do to the DVD while it was playing? Did you let it play all the way through or did you skip parts? Boys, it's not a difficult question. Did you skip parts? Yeah. Why? It's the second week running you've done that. OK, would you like to tell me why? Because you don't want to go home. But nobody's making you stay. Kieran doesn't want to go home. Kieran wants to watch the DVD to the end. So why are you going film club? To watch the film? Boys, you make it sound like it's a detention. You've stayed behind after <clears throat> school because you want to. Yeah? Yes. Thank you. Do you want to watch the film? Yes. OK. I'll now, Luke, film. away. Away. So, is anyone making you go to film club? No. Are you being forced to go to film club? No. So if you decide you don't like the film, should you fast forward it or should you just leave? Leave. So what do I think you should do now? Uh, leave. Go home. Yay! Uh, 
Is it time for Luke to leave? Yeah, it must be time. Cookie! No, I've got to go. Cool. Luke! Yeah? Hurry up! I was chatting to... I was chatting to him. Right, Luke, can we just clarify something with Miss Conway being present, OK? Do you have any more afternoon schools to serve? Are you going to be here till five o'clock on Friday? He came and told me that he had afternoon school for the rest of the week. I know. I don't know where he's got that from. He had a, he started having a go at me earlier, saying, <laughs> I ain't staying till five on Friday. I ain't staying till five. You can't stay staying till five on Friday. You're just headache. You just you do my head in. What's it like when he does have successes and things have gone well? He's a jolly, smiley person. He'll come out and he'll come up to you and he'll smile and he'll say hello and, and you can deal with him. But then you'll try and have the same conversation 24 hours later and boom, we're off, absolutely off. So, very difficult, but you just got to, you know, play each day as, it's, as, it, as it goes with him. Bye-bye, Luke. And make sure your uniform's perfect. Yeah. I actually quite like him when he's... There's something I do like about him. It's mock exam week for all Year 11s. Right, Year 11 summative reports are going out on Friday, so we'll see if we can make sure that everything is in place for that. I Deputy Head Mr Drew, Drew is taking the staff briefing. Um, I also need... <laughs> <laughs> I would suggest that while some of the children may well feel that I think I'm some kind of Bond villain... <laughs> <laughs> to, to quote Luke, Luke Cook in his English exam, who, when suggested to have a topic to write, told he could write about me, wrote in his English exam, there's a bloke who works at this school and he just thinks he's all it. He thinks he's a police officer or an army officer, but he just ain't and he needs to shut up. <laughs> people, a bit of fruit for the exam. If one orange makes a difference, I think two oranges could make you a genius. This morning's exam is about to begin, and Mr Drew is handing out brain food. Morning, Ryan. Bit of fruit for your exam. Bit of fruit here, people, as we arrive. Bit of fruit you're taking an exam. Excellent. That could be those extra marks that make your life worthwhile. You could be sat there in that highly paid job in years to come and think it was that bit of fruit for my English exam. That's what did it. Nice bit of fruit as we go in, boys, girls. While most students are taking mocks, a few like Luke are taking the real thing. It's part of a strategy the school uses for students they're worried won't make it to the end of the year. If you are sitting against the wall and not facing forward, I will be asking you to leave the exam. Make me say it three times, Luke Cook, and I will get you out of the exam. The time is 9.28. You may start. Luke is struggling to even start his paper. Come on, Luke. Come on, have a go. Come on. But then. Because I'd rather not try and fail. I didn't try and fail. No, don't be silly. Don't be silly. If you get at least the grade, when you feel good, you might, you might even get a G. And I don't even revise things. I think Luke's struggling a bit. I've just tried to get him to. I'm trying. He just doesn't want to do it. Really. No, he says, I haven't revised. He says, I'd rather not do it. Fail and try it and fail. I said, don't be silly. You've got this game great. Yeah, I've got kicked out. You're determined to get out of it one way or another, aren't you? No, it wasn't even my fault. After being rude to an examinations officer, Luke left the exam. I was like, well, fuck off. Right, do you like to explain to me what's going on today? Nothing. OK, you're in for a Mass GCSE exam, and you're then being rude and abusive. How am I being abusive? To Miss Beatty. How was I abusive? Let me go do it with no fuss, no hassle, and I'll sit down and do the exam. You want us as a school to take into account the difficult circumstances in your life at the moment. I have no problem with that. I am I'm not bringing it up. Excuse me, Wall. I am totally in agreement with you. Yeah, no, Your I'm life not. at the moment Thank is you, quite sir, a chat. I'm, I'm, not, well, yeah, I'm not bringing it up. This, but Luke, it's part because of I don't the want to do the exam. Picture. It's not because my granddad died, right, sir. Hold on. Why are you bringing it up? Whoa. I'm leaving. Whoa. I'm leaving. Okay. Your choice. 
No need for you to leave. No need for you to leave. Which way? That way. I don't want to do the exam just because my granddad died, so there's no one needs to bring it up, he's there. If we don't in any way, shape or form, Luke, think about the difficulties that you face at the moment, that's actually more worrying. Do you think, and I'm talking about Miss BT, do you think you've dealt with that in the right way? I don't think there was any right or wrong way to deal with it. Okay. Swearing isn't the right way, Luke, is it? Yeah? That isn't the right I said way. said piss. It's like fuck, shit, whatever. I said piss. Well, clearly Miss BT. It's hardly a bad word. If she's offended by it, I'm going to say sorry to her. My father died when I was 16 years old, just as I started my A-levels. Therefore, I do understand the concept of losing somebody who is very close to you at a very kind of vulnerable and fragile age. But I also do not believe that you should therefore have to ask other people to suffer at the hands of somebody. Because what you're basically saying is somebody's very upset and miserable because something's happened to them, and as a result, they then are allowed to cause other people to feel like that. Well, no, they're not. They're not, and it's not necessary. Tomorrow, as far as I'm concerned, we'll move on, we'll start again, Luke, exactly like we do all the time, we'll try again. And you know that, because that's what I always do with you. But we are the adults in the situation, we are the teachers, we need you to accept our decision. I do wonder how early our meetings might finish if we didn't drink and eat. Honestly. Okay. Options is the one yeah. I really have no idea about at all. So we'll we'll cross that boat when we get to it. Cross that boat when we get to it. Oh, you're <laughs> great today. <too. laughs> are we going to cross the bridge um, with the boat, or without the boat? Under the bridge with the boat? I guess. What are going to do? <laughs> 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 Moving on. Anyway, Luke uh, Cook in Year Eleven. I spoke to Bex, and Bex said his report was very good this week, which I find really hard to believe. Is there any general feedback on him? Well, I'm not sure, sure when he's in a lesson. He he's in that badly behaved, I have right. to be honest. I'm, alarm bells are ringing for me. I've got strong staff saying he's unteachable. He's another one whose staff will I'm not scared of. tell off yeah. and are scared of. He's like a force of nature destroying I think, other I think people's we education. Need, I think we need an unteachable Luke strategy. So when he is unteachable, what we do with him? And we need to give staff uh, an escape clause, release yes, yes. valve, whatever. Yeah. 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 And we'll I'm cross so that boat when we get to it. <laughs> <laughs> Are we at the boat now? We're at the boat. No. No. <laughs> the sky is in science. We get hit by quite a lot of meteorites. Is it true, sir, if that <laughs> tune staff in here? Yeah? <laughs> And you have make a wish and they come through the tr uh, truth. Oh. Um, it's a lovely thought, but I can't think oh. of any logical reason why that would happen. I'm reluctant to say no, oh. because it's oh. quite a nice thing to think. And that sometimes, shit, Sky, God. if you believe in something like that, yeah. or you'll look for it and it might happen. Yeah. Might, maybe not. She's found out her due date. Yeah. If the baby comes early, it will clash with her exams. She's going to be yeah. eight months and three weeks oh, yeah, yeah. pregnant like when you get to the last exam. It's June. But they haven't planned it very well, have they? No, no. not at all. <laughs> when, we, um, well. when we find out what a due date they is, because yeah. obviously exam wise, if a due date is too close, then we'll need to look at where she does her exams. In the birthing pool. I'm happy to support with Sky if there's any way I can. Thank you. Good. Obviously, we want to do as much as we can to make sure that by the time that you are going off in June, you've got as much done as you possibly can. I think the exam is really important for me because I want to do well in life, have a good job. I want to stay at school, but then when everyone, like, finish school, I will be take a time off for a year and I will be starting college on September 2012. This stuff seems all very manageable. Yeah. You should be able to get all this stuff done, so then that'll keep you out of like any kind of after school sessions and things yeah. like that, so you can just go home at the end of the day. Brother, right, go have some lunch. <laughs> I think Sky's head is fairly well screwed on. I think she gets the fact 
that if she has a good education and therefore can get a good job, her child has a better life. Well, she gets that. Um, Liam needs a bit of reminding. He's not the most academic student in the world, but you hope that Liam works hard to make the most of the chances he's been given, and we've given him a really good basis to do that. He's going to have a qualification in construction, qualification in painting and decorating. All yours. OK. All he really needs is to finish those courses off and get a decent reference, and he'll get a college place on one of those courses that he wants to do. The school are finding ways to help Liam succeed, but they're having a harder time with Luke. You've been given the option. And Miss Burns Exactly, Alder, I've been given the listen. option, Will and I listen? want to pick an option, Will and she won't let... No, I won't. Me. You need to, Luke. She's you given me the option, to. I'll pick an option, and she don't let me do it. Okay. So I'm not You're getting not the option, am I? OK, let's go and talk somewhere else. Luke, give me a face. I've had concerns about how we deal with you for a while because your attitude is almost impossible at times because you won't listen and we have nowhere to go with you. We are going to fail other children because of you, OK? You can choose to engage with us at the level we want you to engage with us or you can choose not to. I can't make you. It's just certain teachers, you just need to talk to them. They know what pisses me off and they do it deliberately. So I might as well just say it. Now, Luke, I, you, can, you can say that's what you view. I can't argue with your view. If that's what you think, that's what you think. But there is a bit of a big chip on your shoulder, Luke, that you think people are against you, even if they're not. Yeah. OK? The school have reached a point where they have to make a decision about Luke's future. As the last resort before permanent exclusion, Luke has been removed from key lessons in which he is most disruptive. So in order to avoid constant conflict with him, he has less time in school, which suits him, suits us, suits everyone. How many lectures do we get in the first show? Two. Two, brilliant. One of the lessons Luke still attends is science. Second show, how many lectures can we have? Eight. Eight, brilliant, well done. Yeah, 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 brilliant, Luke. I suppose, in a way, it is a positive outcome. It's a positive outcome in that we will have created a circumstance in which he has achieved a decent set of GCSE grades. So, yeah, it's a positive outcome. <laughs> but, Luke, really what, what really makes me really chuffed is the fact you want to take a picture of that and put on your Facebook page a picture of, of <laughs> an atom of calcium. Where? You look at Luke and you look at a number of others, they will get to the end of Year 11. They'll almost have killed you in the process, but they will leave with something. They may not turn around and thank you, but you'll be able to look at them and go, do you know something? I couldn't have done any more for you than I did. I stood my ground with you, and when you were out of order, I told you you were, but I also know that I made sure you got a set of results. Luke didn't turn up on results day, but he achieved seven GCSEs at A star to C, and he's off to study plumbing at college. Sky and Liam's baby boy, Kaylin, fitted in with their exam timetable, arriving late, three weeks after Sky's last GCSE. It looks like you, Sky, doesn't it? <laughs> do you think? Yeah, I do, actually. With Liam at work, Sky picked up the couple's results. Bye. Liam banked 12 GCSEs A star to G, while Sky achieved 7 A star to C. Rather than wait, she's decided to go to college this year. Yeah.